background is that um, the man who killed Daniel was Mother's fourth partner, as far as we can reckon, three of whom appeared in this country. Um, all these relationships were characterized, rather defined, by the use of alcohol and violence on both sides. Um, there were the usual unsettled housing, eight changes of address um, since Daniel's birth, uh, and poor engagement with services. Services were offered, um, but were declined on a number of occasions. I'll mention some of these things as I go along. So just to go through Daniel's history fairly briefly, um, he was small for gestational age, not surprisingly, gestation around 38 weeks. Um, so low centile for weight, but as far as we can trust midwife measurements, a relatively long baby. Um, he missed um, immunizations or had delayed checks, um, and in fact wasn't seen in the ages of eight weeks and nearly three. Um, at the age of three, he, he did, um, the health officer did manage to get access to him. Uh, and found a child with little speech at the age of three, prone to tantrums, as reported. He had a bruise at the time he was seen. Uh, nursing nurse input was arranged to try to improve his development, um, but uh, the family failed to engage and moved shortly thereafter. The next significant event, event which I'll come back to, was a broken arm. Um, shot six months after that, the younger sister was born. This was the child off the current partner. Um, and at the new birth visit by the health officer, there were complaints about Daniel, including him being aggressive, always hungry, raiding the fridge at night, soiling and smearing. Um, and the health needs assessment was compiled and passed on for the attention of the school nurse because he was about to start school. Um, he started the same school as his sister, which was his sister's second school. Um, the school nurse initially failed to get any access. Um, but um, did manage a home visit eventually with a support worker. Um, she was so concerned she made a referral to consult the community pediatrician for assessment of Daniel's symptoms, but he wasn't actually seen himself at this visit. Um, shortly after that, the younger sister attended her eight-week check, um, and a support worker did manage a couple of visits, but was thereafter denied access. A paediatric referral pattern was consistent in such cases in that it took four attempts before the child was finally seen. The mother either cancelled the appointments or didn't bring Daniel to the appointments, or she made excuses for him being unable to attend. Um, from text messages, it appears that the, the third occasion where she cancelled was almost certainly because she'd half drowned him in the bath the previous night and he wasn't um, fit to attend. Um, and eventually when she was offered a new appointment, this was with escalating concerns from school, into the, uh, she said, no, um, I don't want to bring him next week. A um, couple of months will be fine, thank you. So that's what was done. <coughs> Excuse me. So it took five months from referral to appointment. <coughs> Very unusually, the school head um, phoned the GP to discuss Daniel's case, but the GP didn't actually know anything about him. He'd never been taken for any routine visits or intercurrent illness, uh, and he suggested Mother should bring him to the surgery, which she told the school she was going to do, but of course she didn't do. She actually uh, attended shortly thereafter about her own health, about a skin condition, um, but um, the problem of Daniel uh, wasn't raised. Um, the class teacher, knowing that there was an appointment coming up, wrote a letter to go with him to the appointment to whom it may concern, listing some of the concerns which you can read there. Um, but she didn't mention in the letter, because Mother was going to carry this letter, but actually they'd been quite worried about a number of bruises that Daniel had been seen with over the preceding couple of months as well. So finally, at the age of four years and seven months, um, in the uh, early March, um, five months after starting, sorry, February it would have been, yes, five months after starting school in the referral, um, he, he finally attended and still there were the same list of complaints that had been present uh, from the time his sister was born, he had an excessive appetite, um, he was also scavenging for food, eating chips off the pavements, scavenging in bins, uh, drinking all the time, excessive fluid consumption, disturbed sleep, um, and then 
allowed styling, although this was never witnessed at school, but he was sent to style and sneer at home. Um, he was taught to have worms um, by his mother, I'm not quite sure where this suggestion came from, um, and she said, yes, he, he could speak Polish per perfectly well, but he couldn't speak English. Um, the paediatrician didn't actually hear him utter any speech at all throughout the consultation. Um, he played around the room, didn't interact with the rest of the family. He looked thin and pale, but he wasn't wasted. And the ex physical examination was normal. Um, he was diagnosed as having some sort of hypermetabolic state to try and explain his wasting but apparent high food consumption. Uh, blood tests were done, the GP was asked to prescribe for him, and he was referred on for developmental assessment as having possible autistic spectrum disorder. Um, an appointment was sent for a month later with a questionnaire for the parents to fill in, but he never reached that appointment because three weeks after his clinic visit, he was brought in dead. In the middle of the night, following a 999 call, the SUS team didn't actually recognise under his thin hair there were bruises and other injuries uh, and so it wasn't until the paediatrician who'd first done the home visit then went back to look at the body recognised that actually this child died of injuries um, uh, and the relevant investigations were put in train so in fact from Saturday till Monday the siblings were left alone in the house with the, the parents who killed their brother So Daniel died of head injury. Um, he didn't. Die, he wasn't starved to death, unlike what some of the papers concluded. Um, from the police evidence, it's probable that he died on a Thursday night, um, but 999 wasn't dialed until 3 a.m. or 10 to 3 um, on uh, a Saturday morning. Um, and he was placed. His body was placed in his sister's bed. Um, she um, woke, I'm not sure she was supposed to, um, and um, she was told um, there's something you've got to tell Daniel in the morning, but I think she already knew. Um, and he died of, of, of brain injury, head injury, uh, but he also had diabetes insipidus from the head injury. His posterior pituitary function was knocked out by his head injury, and so he also um, dehydrated himself uh, in the hours leading up to his death, which is what accounts for the massive weight loss. Um, the clinic three weeks before, he was 13.8 kilos. His dead body in the PM room was 10.7. Um, and um, a lot of this was fluid. Most of this was fluid that went into the mattress that was found after he, he died. Um, he had a high serum sodium but low urine um, concentration, sodium and other electrolytes, showing that his kidneys weren't concentrating the urine, and this is because of the traumatic diabetes insipidus. A uh, well-recognised complication of head injury um, occurred, occurred in road traffic accidents, of course, but not common um, in um, abusive head trauma.